trusted news source, ABC6 News at Noon. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us. I'm Doreen Scanlon. New at noon today, Cranston police investigating an overnight shooting. Police tell us it happened right outside the pregame lounge on Dyer Avenue. Police believe cars and one other business were hit with bullets. No injuries have been reported. Detectives are investigating. There is a big name coming to commencement at Roger Williams University. Dr. Anthony Fauci, the chief medical advisor to the president and the director of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, will be giving the keynote speech at graduation this year. He will also be given an honorary degree. The university felt this choice was appropriate given the guiding force that Fauci has been for the nation during these past two difficult years. We are really excited to have Dr. Fauci with us um, on so many levels, a, a national speaker for Roger Williams, um, and to really celebrate sort of the transition in the pandemic for these seniors who've been through a lot in their college experience. It just kind of brings a great closure and send off into the world for um, the senior class. The in-person ceremony for undergrads, graduate and law students is scheduled for May 20th. And now to the weather as we take a live look outside with our sky cam. Some chilly temps out there today, although lots of sunshine. Chelsea's in the Weather Center with your first forecast. Hey, Doreen, good afternoon to you. Hi, everyone. You're right. Plenty of sunshine outside in the Providence area right now. Most of us seeing sunshine right now. Unfortunately, though, that sunshine isn't helping us much. We have temperatures that currently are 20 degrees below average for this time of year. And that's not all. Look at the wind sustained around 15 miles per hour. That makes us feel 10 degrees cooler in the Providence area. So we're looking at temperatures for most of us in the upper 20s, low 30s. The temperatures alone are so chilly for this time of year. We have the wind gusts that are coming in anywhere from about 20 to almost 30 miles per hour in some spots from the northwest, a cold, dry wind direction. And that's, of course, making us feel so much cooler. Some of us right now, like like Smithfield and Newport and Block Island have wind chills in the teens outside. Again, the average high for this time of year is in the low 50s. So these wind chills especially way, way below average. There was actually a few snowflakes flying around the area early this morning, mainly up towards Boston, but some spots saw a few flurries. At this point, you can see a little more flurry activity off to our west, and we'll continue to see a mix of sun and clouds into the afternoon. Could some spots see a flake flying around? It's possible, but overall the big story today is certainly the wind and the cold temperatures. We're talking about temps staying in that low mid 30s range for the remainder of the afternoon. Overnight, we dip down to the low 20s and teens by the start of the day tomorrow with feel like temperatures in the single digits. I'll let you know when we turn things around and start to warm up in just a few minutes. Dorian. All right, Joy, thank you for that. Thanks, Charles. <laughs> now to our entertainment news and the Oscar ceremony where no one is talking about the awards. Actor Will Smith, the headline today after slapping comedian Chris Rock for making a joke about his wife. Jada, I love you. G.I. Jane 2, can't wait to see it. Fox joke targeting Jada Pinkett Smith's shaved head. She's been open about her struggle with alopecia, which leads to hair loss. Black women are at a higher risk for the disease. After laughing at the joke at first, Smith then walks on stage and hits rock. <laughs> oh, wow! Once back at his seat, Smith continued to yell at Rock. A short time later, Smith won an Oscar. He apologized to the Academy, but did not mention Chris Rock. The LAPD says Rock declined to file a police report after the slap. And now to the crisis in Ukraine. The war entering its second month with Russian forces stalled, but still pummeling Ukraine cities. And President Biden's aides scrambling to walk back his impromptu declaration that Vladimir Putin cannot remain in power. ABC senior national correspondent Terry Moran reports. Hard fighting continues across this country. Ukrainian forces are now launching counterattacks, and they claim to have retaken several towns in strategic locations. Russian forces, they're stalled in some places, but they are pressing attacks and gaining some ground out in the east and continuing bombardments across this country, including here in Lviv, uh, where they hit an oil depot and a tank facility over the weekend. Meanwhile, President Zelensky of Ukraine is talking about a peace deal. He gave an interview to independent Russian journalists. It did not air on Russian state TV, but in it, Zelensky says he would do a deal if Russian forces withdraw to those territories they occupied before the war began out in eastern Ukraine and Crimea. Uh, as in exchange, 
Ukraine would pledge neutrality, not join NATO, but the whole thing would have to be guaranteed, Zelensky says, by Western powers, likely including the United States. All this in the wake of President Biden's trip to Europe and that line that he delivered at the end of his speech in Warsaw in which he said that Vladimir Putin cannot be allowed to remain in power. The White House quickly walking that back, saying the U.S. has no plans to remove Vladimir Putin from the Kremlin, no plans for regime change. Terry Moran, ABC News, Lviv, Ukraine. And now to an ABC6 update. Providence police are investigating a stabbing on Florence Street. Police tell us two men were stabbed and taken to Rhode Island Hospital. They are both listed in stable condition. There's also been an arrest in the case as Providence police continue their investigation. And investigators ruled that a body found floating near Battleship Cove in Fall River was the result of a suicide. Police responded to that area just before 1 o'clock Sunday afternoon. They found an unidentified man's body floating in the Taunton River. The Bristol County DA's office confirmed the cause of death. And the man charged with robbing Rehoboth Wine and Spirits back in December is being held without bail. The Sun Chronicle reports Rafael Gonzalez pled not guilty to an armed robbery while masked charge. He is considered a dangerous person and ordered held without bail. Police accused Gonzalez of threatening the clerk with a pipe and demanding money. Gonzalez was arrested in Boston a few days later. And a Bristol County man died in Boston this weekend when a parking garage under construction partially collapsed. It happened Saturday at the Government Center garage. Police identified the victim as 51-year-old Peter Monsini of Southeastern. Monsini was operating a Bobcat-type construction vehicle when the floor buckled underneath him. That vehicle fell nine stories. The construction site is temporarily shut down. Some parts of the wall at Middleborough High School are covered up today after officials say hateful graffiti was sprayed there. The principal says that graffiti was discovered early yesterday morning. It included a direct threat against him. He said a swastika was spray painted near the entrance to the school. Police responded and are reviewing surveillance tapes that reportedly show two suspects involved. And we turn to more of today's headlines now. There is another candidate for Providence Mayor. Brett Smiley making it official at this hour. He's holding an event right now at CIC in Providence. That's a co-working space. Smiley was chief of staff to Governor Raimondo as well as director of administration. He did run for mayor back in 2014 before bowing out and endorsing Jorge Alorza, who made him the city's chief operating officer. He'll face other Democratic candidates in that office, Nerva LaFortune, Gonzalo Cuervo, and Michael Solomon. And in Bristol County, the Dartmouth Select Board will vote to approve a body camera agreement with the local police union. Dartmouth Town Meeting already approved funding to equip all town officers with body cams. The police union voted to approve an agreement on how they'll be used. Now, the final hurdle is the Select Board signing off. If all goes as planned, the town administrator says the cameras will be rolled out late next month. Tonight's meeting starts at 6.30. In Freetown tonight, Selectmen will consider joining the Bristol Plymouth Regional Voc Tech School. The school currently serves five Bristol County communities, Rainham, Taunton, Dighton, Rehoboth, and Berkeley, in addition to Bridgewater and Middleborough. Students who want Voc Tech schooling in Freetown have typically attended Old Colony. Tonight's meeting starts at 5 o'clock. And in Fairhaven tonight, the Select Board will consider approving the use of town property for filming of finest kind. The film expected to feature Ben Foster and Toby Wallace. The New Bedford Standard Times reports that filming is expected to start in May or June, and the Fairhaven Bridge is one spot the directors want to use. Zendaya and Jake Gyllenhaal were said to be a part of the cast in the original planning stages, but it's unknown if they're still involved. The Select Board meets at 6.30 tonight at Town Hall. Coming up here on ABC 6 News at noon, Casey Kantz is here to break down the vote on Rhode Island's new license plate design. You better hurry, voting ends tonight. And later, a missing bird in North Kingstown. What this bird does that his owner hopes will help you find him.
We're back now with news that's trending now. It has all come down to this. There are just hours left for you to vote on Rhode Island's new license plate design. Casey Kantz is live in the newsroom with what those five finalists look like. Hi, Casey. Yeah, hi, Doreen. You said it. It all comes down to this. As controversial as it might be to some, we are officially going out with the old and in with the new here in the Ocean State. Governor McKee and the Rhode Island DMV unveiled the five finalists for what will eventually be a new license plate here in the state earlier this month they did that. It'll replace the 25-year-old wave design. You see the five potential new designs here on your screen. Couple featuring the Newport Bridge. You see some featuring traditional blue waves. What do you think? You can vote up until 11.59 tonight. Why do you change plates? Well, first off, because they're 25 years old, many of them get one, they're peeled, they're unreadable. And one of the factors is plates are supposed to be reflective. And the reflectivity starts to degrade after five to seven years. So we have plates that are out there that are unsafe, they're unreadable. Even though we did change the wave, uh, we still did keep a couple of the options so that people still felt that connection to the wave. Yeah, a lot of people love that traditional wave. And that is indeed true, too. Two of the five actually still featuring waves. Uh, one darker on a lighter background you see there. The other blue waves on a blue background and again this all comes down to you which one's it going to be again you get to decide tonight is the last night though to vote so you got to act quickly voting closes 1159 tonight we do have a link to vote up at abc6.com doreen i'm curious to see which one you like live mm. in the newsroom casey Kant's abc6 news it's a tough decision but we get to vote privately so there you go Still to come here on the news at noon. We can tell you about that missing bird in North Kingstown and what you can look for or listen to to help that homeowner track him down. And Chelsea has your full seven day forecast. She'll tell us when it'll stop feeling like winter again when we come back. In North Kingstown, a concerned bird owner wants you to be on the lookout for her cockatiel. The owner says this gray cockatiel flew away yesterday around 2 in the afternoon, and apparently he talks. So you may hear him say peekaboo or what are you doing if you come into contact. He can whistle too. The owner's hoping for a safe return. If you see him, call animal control. Also, send us a note here at news at abc6.com. We'll let the owner know as well. And now. Your ABC6 Storm Tracker weather with meteorologist Chelsea Priest. Boy, I hope that little guy has someplace warm to, to curl up today before he's found. We are looking at a really, really chilly day across southern New England. Plenty of sunshine outside right now. This is the view over Richmond. Just a really gorgeous day. 
from inside, looking out the window. As soon as you step outside, you're hit by these really cold temperatures. We've been spoiled this month. Overall, the month has been very mild with just a few cooler days kind of sprinkled in. The next 24 to 48 hours or so are looking pretty chilly here in southern New England. Right now, temperatures are only in the upper 20s and low 30s. It's 29 in Smithfield, 29 in Westerly, 28 for Block Island, 30 in Newport, 32 here in Providence, 32 in Providence. It's 20 degrees below where we typically should be for this time of year and also below our average low for this time of year, which should be the coldest temperature of the day. We're not even there yet. We have plenty of sunshine and the sun's not setting until after seven o'clock this evening, but it's just not helping. We have these strong winds from the northwest sustained anywhere from 10 to 20 miles per hour. That northwest wind, a cold, dry wind direction. You think about what's up to the north and west of us and that air is just coming our way. We have gusts coming in 20 to up to 30 miles per hour at times. And of course, that's continuing to pump in just cold temperatures, and it also makes us feel so much cooler. So when you're walking to and from the dog, the car, maybe letting the dog out in the afternoon, walking out of work, you're talking about feel like temperatures, how it actually feels outside, more like the teens and low 20s, 10 degrees below the actual temperature here in Providence, a 22 degree wind chill, bitterly cold when you factor in that wind. Now, the good news is today is the worst of it today into tonight, I should say. Tomorrow morning looks really cold, but from there, Tomorrow afternoon, we'll make it into the low 40s. Still significantly below average, still breezy, feeling cooler than those low 40s. But we do see an upward trend in temperatures. On Wednesday, we'll be in the upper 40s range. And then you see 60s on the map for Thursday and Friday. So a significant warm up to close out the week that may come with some rain at times, but it'll at least be very mild. Because this morning, it was cold enough that some spots saw some light snow falling, especially up to the towards the Boston area, out over the Cape. There's been some light snow shower activity, very, very very fine, very light snowflakes flying around, but must much of that coming in with that breeze from the northwest over the lakes. You can see making its way all the way into western Mass and western Connecticut. Most of us stay with that mix of sun and clouds. It's not out of the question, though, that there's a few flakes flying around at times. Again, very, very light very isolated, very fine flakes, just some snowflakes blowing around outside. Don't panic. As we head through tonight, we are clear, we are cold. Temperatures dip down to the teens, feel like temperatures in the single digits. Tomorrow looks mostly sunny, a few degrees warmer, still breezy, so another cold day. And then as we head into Wednesday, we'll start the day with some sunshine. Expect increasing clouds as the day goes on. There's a warm front that's going to come through. You can see some mixed precipitation just to our west at 6 p.m. on Wednesday. A lot of that falls apart as it comes through, but you'll see increasing clouds along that warm front, though, is where warmer air starts to move in. Mid 30s today, feeling much cooler because of the wind tonight. With temperatures down into the teens, we're going to feel more like the single digits. Here's our feel like temperatures for about 630 tomorrow morning. Single digits for almost all of us. A really, really cold night ahead of us. You're looking at temperatures in the low 40s tomorrow, 20s into Wednesday morning. Wednesday's a little bit warmer, but still cool. And then we have those 60s to look forward to for Thursday and Friday. Dory? Thanks. Coming up here on the News at Noon, back to the Oscars. It's time for a look at the films that were supposed to make the headlines. Before the Will Smith and Chris Rock thing stole the show.
The Oscars returned in full force to the Dolby Theater last night. And of course, we already told you about the moment between Chris Rock and Will Smith that's making all the headlines. But that overshadowed the honors for many others, including Best Picture. ABC's Zoreen Shaw has those other highlights. For the 94th Academy Awards. It's the moment the entertainment world had been waiting for. The Academy Awards back at the Dolby Theater. It was the first time in three years that hosts were back at the Oscars at all. Amy Schumer, Regina Hall, and Wanda Sykes. This year, the Academy hired three women to host because it's cheaper than hiring one man. Making history together as the first female team of three. And that wasn't the only historic moment from this year's show. Troy Kutzer. I really want to thank all of the wonderful deaf theater stages where I was allowed and given the opportunity to develop my craft as an actor. Many eyes on the night's prizes, especially after the Oscars continued expanding their membership the last few years. Openly queer woman of color and Afro-Latina who found her strength in life through art. Encanto! I am so proud to be a part of a film that puts beautiful, diverse characters in front and center. Hi, Mariposa. And of course, this year, the performance is happening again live. We worked and built this on our own. And another historic moment as a streaming service movie won Best Picture for the first time ever. Okay, Coda. <laughs> And so many stars making their way to Elton John's AIDS Benefit Foundation party. He actually couldn't be there because he had a scheduling conflict, but Lady Gaga stepping up along with several other co-hosts to make sure the party still goes on. Reporting from Hollywood, Zoreen Shaw, ABC News. All right, still to come, a picture day fail. The hilarious photos taken on St. Patrick's Day. So Chelsea has another look at your afternoon forecast. We'll be right back. Well, finally this afternoon, what could go wrong with picture day on St. Patrick's Day? Well, when the photographer's using a green screen and the kids are decked out in green for the holiday, well, check it out. They speak for themselves. All those who were wearing green became transparent, like this girl who became a flower bed, or this boy's head popping out of a farm field, or how about this one, this boy that's separated by a dirt road. 
I know you could appreciate this, Chelsea, because every year on St. Patrick's Day, you explain why you can't wear green. Yes, anything color green, <laughs> that would happen to me with my weather graphic. So maybe some dark greens work, but uh, I hope the photographer is doing those yes. pictures So over. they said it was the, a fail, and it was just in the proofs, okay. and they okay. just had automatically printed, but they will doctor them up okay. and make sure that they get the pictures. But I thought that was just too uh, funny. Very relatable. That is my, a serious standpoint. fail. Yeah. I know, that's a big one. Uh, we are looking at partly sunny conditions outside for the remainder of the afternoon. Big picture today, it is breezy, it is cold out there. Temps are in the low 30s, feeling 10 degrees cooler. Same thing tomorrow morning, down to the teens to start the day, but within to the next 24 to 36 hours or so, we slowly start to warm up. Tomorrow's chilly still. Upper 40s on Wednesday, 60s though for Thursday and Friday. It comes with some rain, but we'll take it up to 60s. Thanks for giving us another reason to wear with your coat. Today's the <laughs> worst of it. Okay. Today and tonight are the worst of it. Yeah. All right, thanks, Chelsea. Thank you for joining us for the news at noon. The news continues. The news continues. First at four. Have a great day, everybody.